Greetings Internet, DDA here with the updated version of my Black Trunks breakdown. I had such a great time making the first video and you guys responded to it so well. I know that I needed to update this video inevitably and certainly I will be coming out with a lot more deck breakdowns now that I've gotten two regionals under my belt and this weekend I'm actually headed out to the New York regional so Black Trunks actually got a lot of support in set 3 so you're going to see that this tier list has changed quite significantly. The sections are still going to stay the same. You're still going to start with your core, the core cards that you're going to want to include in pretty much every single Black Trunks deck regardless of your method or your win condition. Following your core, we're going to follow up with the three sections of different types of Black Trunks deck that you can build, uh, and that will be Beats, Control, and Anchor. So without further ado, let's get started with your core. Starting with the top of your core, the creme de la creme, the coup de gras of all Black Trunks is Black Swirl. This card has always been in the core, but I actually moved it up to the first spot because in all of my matches, this card has just been proven to be always a great draw. It always helps you with Trunks, uh, being able to see his hand and choose any of the cards that you see with either his level 2 or level 4 power. Quite often in the regionals, I was able to put two copies of the same card in the opponent's hand, making this card not only do damage, give you anger, but also make two cards of your opponents unusable. Next up in your core, not really much to say about this card, time is a warrior's tool. Best card in the game, stop all your opponent's attacks, you have to play it in every deck. Speaking of staple cards, Visiting the Past is up next, and this card will help you in almost every situation that you draw it. It only really hurts you the first turn that you draw it, but even in that case, you could still possibly enter combat either a card down by grabbing a really valuable card. Bringing up the rear of tier 1 of your core is Trunk Sword Slash. Being a strong attack at plus 4 stages means that this card can power the damage or knocking your opponent to zero completely. Removing 6 cards can pretty much take out everything that you would worry about your opponent manipulating from his discard pile. Getting near the end of tier 1 core, the first style block that you're going to see on the list is the best of the best, Black Finger Block. With only a 2 PUR on his level 1, and his power level being so high and dropping off so hard as he lowers his stages even just 2 or 3 stages from his top, Black finger block stopping physical attacks, being able to stop stage damage in that regard, and then giving you 3 stages serves a place in your deck always. Closing out tier 1 of your core, this card was actually in tier 2 core in the previous version, but I moved it up to tier 1 because every time that I've drawn this card, it has always swung me and, and just been a really the high value card in my hand. Black Reflection. This card is not necessarily going to be an auto include in every black style deck, but when your level 1 and level 2 remove cards when entering combat, it is really easy even early game to grab some key attacks from your opponent and use them to your advantage. The important thing to remember with Black Reflection is it is not just any attack that you're playing, it is the best attack that your opponent has. Starting out tier 2 of your core, Black Foreshadowing. This card has the potential to do anywhere between 3 and 6 cards, maybe even 7 cards of damage that your opponent can do very little to block besides Lookout Drill. Add in the gaining of stages and 3 endurance, this card has been a major contributor to many of my wins at regional events. Next up, when you think of an aggressive energy block, you think of Black Corruption. It's one of the only blocks in the game that can actually do damage, and it pretty much does damage every single time you draw in your hand. Next up for tier 2 of your core, Black Smoothness Drill. Even though you're going to inevitably discard this drill when you level, gaining the advantage of a card over your opponent, even for just a single combat, is good enough to include this card in your deck regardless. Closing out tier 2 of your core, a new card in set 3 that has uh, quickly become a staple in many, many of the decks in the format right now, I'll Dig Your Grave. Black Style especially loves this card because it's a base of 7 stages and 1 life card and automatically makes all your attacks unpreventable from the remainder of combat. You do actually have the option to level if this hits, which Trunks may want to do depending 
The only disadvantage of this card with Trunks is your powers don't really help you in combat with Trunks. However, if you're facing a deck that has a lot of drills in play or really uh, wants to stay on a certain level like Krillin level 1 or Piccolo level 2, you can get him off that level and start to disrupt what he's trying to do in his deck. Starting out, tier 3 of your core, Black Declaration. I originally said you'd only want to play one or two copies of this card in your deck, but I'm going to actually up it to two or three cards. This card is just excellent. It helps you so much against Dragon Ball 6, as well as getting around Orange Focusing Drill to kill their you know, Burning Aura Drill or their Energy Stance Drill. Next up for tier 3 of your core, Black Command. I strongly considered removing this from the core because I thought that maybe that if you didn't really uh, focus on anger with a Black Trunks deck, you wouldn't want to have this card in your deck. But the advantage that Black Command gives you with Trunks is that it allows you to level outside of combat and actually bypass the idea of not being able to use your power when leveling. Getting close to the end of your core, tier 3 core. Next up, Devastating Blow. The black has very little anti-anger, so we'll take any anti-anger that we can get and it really comes in a powerful form with Devastating Blow. Devastating Blow having AT damage on it means that it'll actually do damage while having great utility. Another new addition to the core and closing out your core tier 3 is Black Refusal. I often played around with this card, adding it to, to the core. It was in several of my Black Trunks versions uh, before set 3 and it worked its way in into set 3 because of the uh, format. A lot of decks are playing drills and setups and orange has actually uh, become a thing now a lot of people are playing orange as well as red utilizing the all of the amazing red setups so setups are becoming more and more of a threat and black refusal is the perfect answer to that so that concludes your black trunks core it's about 35 cards and at this point you're gonna want to choose a kind of direction of your black trunks deck you have uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 cards to play with to really uh, define the focus of your deck. So you're going to want to ask yourself the question, am I going to focus on aggro beats where I'm just going to try to keep pressure on the opponent, keep entering combat, and try to stage lock them at zero? Am I going to try to do more control, controlly based deck, utilize the one, stay on level one, and uh, force the opponent to enter combat on you by playing a lot of uh, black setups like black searching technique, or are you going to try to have MPVV as a secondary win condition, which is definitely viable, especially with all the cards it got in set 3. So the first section that we're going to go over here is your beats section. So starting off, beats tier 1. No, this is not ever leaving the top of beats tier 1. Trunk Sword Stance, a controversial card. A lot of people think this card is um, not exactly the best because you have to have a card down when you use it. You have to have it in your hand and you use it when entering combat and all it does is level you but it does allow you to utilize both the level of trunks you're on and the level of trunks that you're going to. The main thing that you want to do with trunk sword stance which is why I actually keep this card at two, two copies right now in my deck is you want to get to level 3 and then in the final stages of the game when your opponent has about 10 maybe 20 life cards left you want to enter combat on him with trunk sword stance use the 3 get a card jump to 4 look at your opponent's top 6 and then give him a terrible hand so that you can seal the game I've done this very many times at regionals, very many times in just casual games with my friends. It is the way that you have to win with trunks and the reason that you play trunks for beats. Another great addition that Black Trunks got in set 3, following up tier 1 beats is Pulverize. This card is just excellent. It does a lot of damage, AT plus 3, which is one of the main reasons why it's so high on the list. Black doesn't have very many powerhouse attacks, or at least ones that have decent utility. So many times have I put lots of pressure on the opponent by pulverizing and putting I'll Dig Your Grave on the top of my life deck. Next up for Beats Tier 1, another new addition in Set 3, Black Chin Kick. This card has to be one of my favorite cards that Black got in Set 3, and I was uh, debating whether or not I should put it in the Beats section or the Anger section, because it does give you a fair amount of anger and is excellent in the blue matchup because it can actually level you when you have three anger however the main 
the main point of this card is that it shuts down it is isolation and attack in your hand and that just means it is crazy good when facing off against ally decks because they will have a few allies in play with stages that they are intending to redirect to their allies so you can play black chin kick and isolate his opponent so that he can only take the stages of damage on his main personality and if he doesn't block this it could lock him to zero and just cause you to do lots of critical damage and end up discarding all of his allies next up for your beats tier one black flying knee my verdict is still a little bit out on this card i haven't been able to name two cards in the top four very often but the reason that this card is so high on the list is that even if you don't name it it's still a solid attack for seven and one and the main niche with this card is again getting to your four looking at your opponent's top six in my in my head i imagine you getting to four and using this card when it, uh, as your first action, unstoppable 7-7 seven and seven for the win. Next up, we have the energy attack that we wish we had in set 2, Black Teamwork. It only does 2 life cards of damage, so 3-1 and one with the mastery. But if it hits, your, your opponent is actually going to destroy cards off the top of his life deck, equal to the number of cards that he has endurance in his banish zone. It's really easy to get cards in the banish zone with black trunks when you have a physical attack that removes 6 cards. This card can do a ton of damage, even more than counterball, because it bypasses endurance. Getting close to the end of your beats tier 1, Black Energy Web. I'm still keeping this card in beats because despite that it is one of the best utility cards that Black has to offer, it does a, a fair amount of damage and energy for 6 life cards. Not many styles have access to those kind of powerful energy attacks, but Black has a 6 life card energy that has one of the most powerful effects attached to it. Closing out your Beats Tier 1, this card was a little low on the list in the previous version of this breakdown, Isolation. Much like I said with Black Declaration, um, Orange is becoming a, a serious threat, and Black really doesn't have that much board control. I'm not really afraid of the allies with Black Chin Kick, but this is more for the drill element. If the opponent can get a lot of drill set up on you, you can find it very difficult to, to recover from that. They'll be putting out a lot of damage, cycling cards out with orange possession drill, as well as hiding drill will nullify the life card damage of your mastery, and the two defensive drills will make it really difficult for you to hit attacks, especially when you know your, your trunks powers don't actually have any actions. Starting out tier 2 of your beats, Black Backstrike. Another great card that Chung Scott in set 3, this card is a AT plus 3 physical that is unpreventable and raises you in anger. The unpreventable uh, is often overlooked, but it can really uh, serve a, as a, a large increase in damage of this attack. Save this as your last attack and use it for a, a good clean 8 card damage and critical damage. Next up for beats tier 2, Black Counterball. I do still really like this card, however, um, you know, there are a lot of decks out there that don't really play that many energy combats. So if you find yourself in that matchup, this card can be really lackluster, which is why it's so low on the list. However, in the matchups that do play a lot of energy combats, this card can just hit like a truck. With a 12 life card ceiling, 13 and 1 with the mastery, this card is just a better true power. Next up for your beats, Black and Raised Assault. This card did take a, a, a large dip in the tier list, dropping from tier 1 all the way to mid tier 2, uh, mainly because uh, red is a thing and garlic junior is also a thing. A single red blazing aura can nullify the, the damage of this entire attack. However, its hit effect strongly makes up for that because you can snipe out your opponent's blocks, key attacks, or even endurance, making teamwork even better. Next up for your beats tier 2, Crushing Beam. I didn't include this in my original breakdown, uh, mainly because it was a three, uh, three costing energy, but the utility and the power that this card has is well worth being included on the list and it should have been in the original list. All its damage is removed, so it's gonna help you enable your foreshadowing, your reflection, as well as having two endurance and shuffling into your life deck after use. You can literally win the game by using Crushing Beam and cycling this card. Next up for your Beats Tier 2, if Black Corruption is the aggressive energy block, Black Upward Dodge is the aggressive physical block. 
physical block and essentially being a whole other attack in itself adding plus four life cards to the next attack that you're doing this combat closing out your tier two of beats um, true power now this card um, I thought that it was going to be included in the trunks core originally when the set you know was previewed and, re and released I, I, I really thought true power was what trunks needed uh, however, can't really guarantee that you're going to be able to hit this card with Trunks' power, especially when blue is uh, very strong, very strong in the meta right now. It's it's very hard to hit true power on a blue deck. If you're going to throw an attack that's going to be blocked, you want it to have a strong immediate effect, not an effect that's going to hurt you when they do block it. Starting out with your beats tier 3, Black Chopping Drill. I really like this card. Now again, you are going to be leveling with Black Trunks via Sword Stance, I'll Dig Your Grave, and just Anger in general. So drills, unless you build your deck for them, you're not going to really see them in play very long. So if you're going to have Black Chopping Drill in your deck, you're going to want to not really level that much so you can make full use of its power and adding damage to all your style attacks. Next up for Beats Tier 3, I really like this card, I just haven't found room for it to work into my deck yet, Ensnared. It has 2 Endurance, and if the opponent doesn't have any drills in play, it's a, it's a powerful physical at AT plus 4 stages, um, one of the strongest attacks that you could possibly play in black as far as adding AT damage goes. It offers great utility that black really wishes it had by attaching to a drill and making that drill have no effect. Next up for your beats, tier 3, Black Side Thrust. I really like this card. Uh, you do name a card, any card, and it serves as an additional free damage that you choose. Uh, really strong, especially in certain matchups like Krillin. Next up for your beats, tier 3, Black Overpowering Attack. This card is a powerhouse card. AT plus 6 damage is the strongest AT damage attack that you could possibly play in this deck. Save this card until last and uh, use all your other physical attacks, knocking your opponent to zero, and then pound them with this card for 11 or so damage at the end of combat. Closing out your beats tier 3 with Black Entanglement. I really like this card and I really wish that I could find room for it in my current version of the deck because one of the great things to do with Trunks is enter combat and have the opponent give the opponent a bunch of setups and drills into his hand and then black entanglement actually allows you to remove those cards from his hand making him not even be able to play them next turn so that concludes your beat section uh, if you want to you know just beat down the opponent strong physical attacks or uh, you know powerhouse one of energy attack i list beats as first in this list because i do feel that trunks is primarily a beat down personality uh, he has a high power level and the disruption ability of making your hand really valuable versus making your opponent's hand not that valuable. You want to take advantage of that in combat and push out lots of damage. Next up, the next section is the control section. I called Trunks a battle mage in the first deck breakdown and that still holds true and will hold true as long as uh, this set of Trunks is played. The control section is really going to help you out and help you supplement your beatdown or your anger idea by playing off of Trunks' abilities and making you control the game better than any other beatdown personality. Starting off with tier 1 of your control, you ha we have to talk about confrontation. I didn't include this in the core because of Black Swirl, because with Trunks' power and Black Swirl it's essentially like confrontation and I wanted to be more aggressive, but if you play a more controlly Trunks deck, you're going to want to use confrontation, especially if you play the one-shot energy attacks like Teamwork, Counterball, and True Power, because you're going to want to see his hand to really make sure that you're going to hit those energy attacks. Next up, for your Tier 1 Control, Black Searching Technique. You choose any non-Dragon Ball cards from your opponent's life deck and banish them, two of them. It is essentially Black Scout Maneuver almost in every way, um, except Black Scout Maneuver is um, amazing during the first maybe two combats of the game, whereas Black Searching Technique only gets stronger as the game goes on where you can limit your opponent's options by removing whatever's left in his life deck. Next up for uh, Tier 1 Control, uh, this card made a huge jump. Um, Black Power Up, I had this in Tier 3 Control in the first breakdown, but I realized that I was an idiot because why the hell would you not play Black Power Up in a Black Trunks deck, in a deck that stages are so important and being high on the bracket, being high on the power chart is so important. 
Uh, you don't necessarily need to use this card to uh, end combat. You can just use it to raise your, your power level to its full. But however, it does give you the option to end combat if you do so wish and you get in a bad combat. Next up for tier 1 control, Black Swipe with 2 Endurance and it banishes 3 cards from your opponent's discard pile. It did drop in the tier list a little bit, um, just a little, it's still in tier 1. Uh, mainly because of pulverize uh, there are a lot of cards that you know remove cards from your opponent's discard pile now making this card uh, you know not as valuable as it once was in set one and two following up tier one control wall breaker a lot of people went stir crazy over this card when it came out um, it quickly dropped off uh, people began to realize how to play against it and uh, that it wasn't as strong as everyone was making it out to be. But in a black style deck with very little anti-anger, this card it deserves uh, a spot in the tier list in tier one. One of the worst matchups that this deck has is against red. They do level, gain 10 stages continuously, and it's really hard to keep knocking them to zero to even push out damage. Next up, closing out your tier one control, Heroic Assistance. I love this card and I have loved this card since it came out in set 2. It is one of the greatest control cards and actually combos really well with one of the cards that Black got in set 3. If you're going to play a control variant trunk stack, you're going to want to use the one shot energy attacks like counterball, teamwork, and true power. Using heroic assistance in the right situation to be able to choose the, the exact card that you need to put to the top of your life deck to draw can just cause you to win the game. Next up for your tier two control cards, we have Black Adaptation. Uh, one of the great, I really love this energy block because it, it limits the uh, number of options that your opponent has. Obviously, if you're blocking an energy attack, it's gonna be one that's that you don't wanna see again, and Black Adaptation ensures that. It is an event, which is why it's actually in tier two and not tier one. If this was an energy combat, it would easily be a tier one card. It can be sphered, it can be shut down by things by domination and combined blast. While it does have an amazing effect, it's still gonna sit at the top of tier 2. Next up for tier 2 control, uh, another energy block, Black Evasion. This card um, was uh, really good in set 2, uh, is even better in set 3 because there are actually cards that combo with it. You can use this card to set up the next draw for yourself as well as knowing the top card of your opponent's life deck to set up Black Flying Knee. Next up for your tier 2 control cards, uh, Heroic Energy Sphere. As the metagame really develops and as I progress competitively with this game, I grow less and less impressed with the sphere cards. They do serve a very strong purpose in a deck that doesn't really mind uh, be a card down and have a pure utility card in its hand, but Trunks not having actions on his powers really needs every card in his hand to be very strongly valuable. Heroic Energy Sphere can be that card. It can it can swing. It's a card that can swing the game, but at the same time, it's also a card that could be useless. Next up for your tier two control cards, Black Stop. Another physical block, and this actually this one has anger attached to it, but its effect is extremely controlly and actually activates the card that we're gonna go over uh, very soon, Black Amusement Drill. Once you play this card, your opponent has to play with his hand revealed uh, until the start of your next turn. There are several cards in black that play off of this, like I said, Amusement Drill, as well as uh, Daze and Tracing Beam as well. Next up for your tier two control, closing out Black Defensive Burst. A lot of black decks really love this card. Uh, black Trunks uh, does like it, and if you play a control variant uh, Black Trunks deck that really just limits your opponent's actions this card is excellent try giving your opponent uh two or three physical attacks with your power with no blocks and then just opening with black defensive burst to completely lock him out of every card in his hand if physical ever just sweepingly takes over the meta this card will massively jump in the tier list closing out uh your tier two control black amusement drill uh, this card is very interesting to me because it allows for a lot of options. Uh, whenever your opponent reveals his hand, you're going to look at the top two cards of your opponent's life deck and choose whether, well, you looked at the top two cards of any player's life deck, and then you can choose to put them on the bottom of his life deck or not. So you can use this on yourself to see, you know, maybe set up a uh, black uh, daze, or you can use this on your opponent to set up black flying knee, which is the main use in my opinion. Next up, closing out your control cards with tier three control, 
Black Days. This card on the surface, you, you want this card to be good. You really want it to be good. But really, this card only has one use in my opinion, and that is setting up Heroic Assistance. Now, that's that's pretty much it. it you're, you, take, you can take a key card out of your opponent's hand by naming it if you know it which is easy, pretty easy to do with trunks, but they're still drawing a random card. If you could set up the card that they draw with like an evasion or, or amusement drill, that would be excellent. But the problem is, is that they shuffle the card into their life deck, randomizing their deck, so you don't know what card they're gonna draw. But really, the main use of this card is to set up for heroic assistance. So if you play heroic assistance in your deck, you should, you should consider Black Days. Next up for your tier three control, Black Barrier Destruction. I really like this card, it has 3 endurance and it does allow both players to rejuvenate 4 cards from their life deck, uh, from their discard pile into their life deck. And uh, the thing with Black Trunks is the opponent is going to be really limited in his options with the cards that he has in his discard pile. Uh, so you should be able to choose very strong, very key cards to put back into your life deck, whereas your opponent is going to choose not, not, so, not so good cards. Next up for your tier 3 control, blinding energy move. You can see the large difference between black power up and blinding energy move. Black power up you can use with your mastery, you can just use it to raise you to full, you don't have to end combat, whereas blinding energy move you have to have it in your hand, you can't use it with your mastery. Now despite that it can, it can be used quite successfully especially since you're looking at your opponent's hand with black trunks, closing out your tier 3 control with black chaos. Now, uh, a lot of people think this card is it, it was one of the key contributors of Black Trunks um, in set three. I'm not convinced. I'm uh, the the problem with this card. It does set up for Black Flying Knee um, by putting a card to the opponent's on the top of the opponent's life deck, and it does give you two phases to do whatever it is you want to do: either activate your mastery to limit his choices and then attack, or perform two attacks, try to knock him to zero, remove some allies, remove some, uh, use your black declaration to get rid of his ball six, and then attack him. There's a lot of options you can do when you have two phases to work with. However, this card it actually doesn't give you anything if you look at the card solely alone. Um, it just it literally just gives you time and gives your opponent a card that closes out your control section like I said trunks is a battle mage um, he's a beat down controlly personality uh, so you're gonna want to play most likely play cards from both the beat down and control sections however uh, trunks does have the ability to level um, very quickly and utilize the AT damage anger attacks so the uh, last section that we're going to go over is the anger section so if you want to level just by piecewise anger or if you want to actually try to go for mppv victory you can do that so starting out tier one of your anger cards black lunge the greatest black anger card in this game it goes straight for the life and with trunks you're going to be high on the bracket so chances are this card is going to do eight maybe even nine life cards of damage Critical damage is very easy to obtain when you go straight for the life for 9 damage. Next up for your anger cards, Black Dash. This card has been such a great card in all the regional events. I actually won a game versus Orange Ginyu by entering on him first turn and opening with Black Dash, stealing his Birder, and then just running away with the game with damage and extra damage from Birder. Um, you, you can actually play your opponent's allies from his deck, giving you a lot of options. You know, play your opponent's Kami and just make him cry that you're rejuving every turn and just he can't do that. Next up for your anger cards, tier one is black combo. It allows you to switch the owner of an attached card. So there are a lot of funky weird things that you can do with this card, like move a card off of Bulma and make her have no effect, or move a card like wall breaker off of you and put it to your opponent. The the opponent having tree of might on him could essentially mean that you win the game right there so it does give two anger but does very little damage rightfully so with such a powerful effect next up for your tier one anger uh, a great card that this this deck got in set three black dismissal having two endurance is just icing when you consider all the card the things that this card gives you it gives you an anger lowers your opponent's anger one but the main thing that this card gives you is four stages that means that any energy attacks that you have in your hand that you you couldn't use before you can now use it really does a lot to limit your opponent's damage on you closing out your tier one anger with black knee catch 
This card is just excellent. It does wish it was more like red blocking hand, but nevertheless, it does have endurance and it gives you two anger just from a physical block. Next up for your tier two anger cards, we have a great energy block that it got in set three, Black Resistance. This card has three endurance, which automatically makes it a money card. It counts as four when overturning it for damage. Um, and it does give one anger, so it doesn't have that much powerful enough of an effect, but three endurance alone is strong enough to have it include included in your deck. Next up for your tier two anger, Black Hug Maneuver. Uh, this card uh, is just a standard AT physical that gives you two anger and has two endurance. Really solid, can't go wrong with this attack, and if you're trying to win by anger, every card that, that gives two anger is just really valuable. Next up, tier two anger, a new card that it got in set three, Black Tracing Beam. This card is one for two, so one for three and one with the mastery. But if you manage to name a card that's in your opponent's hand, it does stay on the field to be used again. It's a two anger card, just not immediate anger, but it does it's two energy attacks, double dipping in your mastery. This is a really good card that I haven't really gotten the chance to test out yet. Next up for tier two anger cards, Black Overhead Burst. I love this card. It can help you activate critical damage or extra critical damage uh, when you're facing an ally deck or facing an anger deck. It also gives you two anger, much like many of the cards above it. And the reason that it's sitting so low on the list is because it is a hefty costing energy, a three costing energy. Next up for your tier two, closing out your tier two anger cards is, Bla uh, is Empowered Flying Kick. I really like this card because of the options that it gives you. You can actually use it offensively to raise your anger two, or you can use it defensively to lower your opponent's anger to two. It does set your anger, set both players' anger, so it does get a circumvent wall breaker. You're not raising or lowering anger, you're just setting your anger to two. It is a decently strong physical at AT plus two, so this will actually do damage with trunks. Closing out this tier list and this deck breakdown, tier three anger cards, starting off with black, bi bl black blinding, black blinding bl burst. <laughs> Say that three times fast, people. Black blinding blur. A solid energy attack for five life cards that raises your anger one and has two endurance. It almost looks as if the black anger deck has the endurance that red wishes it had. Next up for tier three anger, enrage blast, which is essentially a worst overhead burst. Um, in every way, it costs the same. Overhead burst does more damage. They give you the same anger. And overhead burst actually has a hit effect, whereas this just gives you the anger. So do not play uh, Enrage Blast in your deck unless you're already maxed out on Overhead Burst. But if you really, really like the extra two anger that Enrage Blast gives you, it is a possible good add to your deck. Following up and closing out the final card in the tier list, tier three anger is Black Punishment. This card was amazing pre errata uh, any time that a card banished itself, uh, regardless of the source, uh, your opponent milled a card. It allowed for uh, looping of you know certain cards to just mill your opponent to death very quickly. Um, they quickly changed it to just having your opponent mill when they use a card that banishes after use, but it can st or or anyone uses a card that banishes after use, which is actually a fair amount of your cards. You know, you have a lot of the cards in the core like Reflection, Sword Slash, Black Swirl that are actually going to remove themselves after use, and the opponent can as well. So this card can actually add a lot of damage to your um, your overall attacks, your overall damage. So it could be a good add if you're going in, in terms of like a hybrid anger beatdown build. So that closes out. That is the uh, updated version of my Black Trunks breakdown. It's certainly changed a lot from the first breakdown. You can see that if you compare them. Um, I still feel that Black Trunks is a very strong pick. I played in two uh, major Panini events with Black Trunks, the Gen Con Qualifier and the Virginia Regional. And uh, uh, the Gen Con qualifier, I kind of scrubbed out a little bit. I didn't do very well. Uh, I don't think I really updated my deck correctly for set three at Gen Con. I didn't include Pulverize. I didn't have Black Flying Knee. Um, but then at Virginia, I did include a lot of those and I saw a great improvement and I've even improved my deck further past Virginia 
I do believe that this is a strong deck, a strong competitive deck. I have about a 70% win ratio versus Krillin because Krillin just cannot handle the strong physical aggression that Trunks throws at him and also the disruption of the hand. Any deck that plays a lot of setups and drills really hates facing off against Trunks and Krillin is no different. So I hope you like my, t uh, my Black Trunks breakdown. Stay tuned for more breakdowns. I'm gonna be coming out with more breakdowns. So stay tuned for a lot more content.